Hello ladies and gents, welcome. Let's talk about COVID-19. After several months since we welcomed the coronavirus, instead of having the number of cases diminishing, the numbers of cases are doing the contrary. The number of cases are skyrocketing all over the United States. The number of cases are skyrocketing everywhere. The start to this holiday season so different for so many. Countless families spending Thanksgiving apart, but they are the lucky ones. At dinner tables across the country, more than 260,000 empty seats, while more than 90,000 Americans spent Thanksgiving in the hospital battling the virus. More than 4 million new cases this November, twice what it was in October, and the month is not over. Despite dire warnings advising against Thanksgiving gatherings, we also saw record-breaking travel. And today, we expect to break another record as millions of Americans are making their way home. This is just a snapshot of some of the nation's busiest airports this morning. But it is not just those lines at the airport that are causing fear. It is the images of these shocking lines across the country. Americans lined up for food. With a vaccine not widely available until next year, businesses remain shuttered and more than 20 million people are claiming unemployment benefits. Yeah. With more than 260,000 people dead, with more than 90,000 people hospitalized, with more than 13 million cases now in the United States. Now you have people that are lacking food, you have small businesses closing, you have more than 20 million people applying for unemployment assistance. That's really hitting a lot of people. That's hitting, can you imagine what? Can you imagine 20 million people doing that? If 20 million people are, are applying for that, that means if you calculate their families, that means we have more than 20 million people, maybe time, five times that. That's how, how much COVID-19 is affecting people. Now, you know, here are possible reasons why the numbers are skyrocketing. You know, this time around, people talk very less about COVID, coronavirus. You know, when COVID-19 came, on social media, all over social media, there was just memes, pictures, videos, funny videos, you know. Post, most posts were about COVID-19, you know, funny or not funny, serious. However, they were just about COVID-19. So that kept people, kept people alert about the virus. People minded. It, it stayed, it was sticking in everybody's mind that COVID-19 is present. But now, so the less we talk about it, the more people disregard its presence. So that can be explaining the reason why the numbers are skyrocketing now. Around this time, you have people traveling, you know, this is a holiday period. You have people traveling back from work, from school, people traveling back home, people traveling back and forth or for, for a vacation. People are going away from home. Some people are going home and some people are going away from home. So you have all these travelings. And so the, that's how the virus is moving too, from this state to this state, from this person to this person. More stories about COVID-19. Good evening. The message from public health officials remains the same. Socially distance, wear a mask. But the numbers keep changing. This weekend, we surpassed 13 million COVID cases in the U.S. We now have more people hospitalized for the virus than ever before. And tomorrow, the number of people traveling is set to hit its highest number since the pandemic began. In one city, the number of cases quadrupled in a month. They're now taking extreme new measures. But a vaccine is on the way, literally. Pfizer has begun flying plane loads of its vaccine into the country. We have all angles covered this holiday weekend, beginning with Megan Fitzgerald. Tonight, the nation bracing for what could be its darkest days ahead. The U.S. adding a million cases each week this month, now surpassing 13 million infections nationwide. In Los Angeles, the most populous county in the nation, daily infections have quadrupled since the spring. Officials now cracking down. I mean, it just feels like we were hit with a board right now. Residents are being told to stay home as much as possible, banning gatherings outside the household. All public and private gatherings, except church services and protests, are prohibited. Restaurants reduced to takeout and delivery only. The scary part is so many small businesses won't make it. 
But despite the surge and warnings from the CDC, more Americans are traveling since the pandemic began. More than 6 million Americans have already traveled over the holidays. Sunday expected to be the busiest yet. To be home for the holidays, many willing to roll the dice. I definitely took precautions with the travel, keep distance and stuff like that. Sparking concerns about more super spreader events like this concert in Houston, where cases have tripled since October. But in this packed nightclub, no masks in sight. Health officials warn these gatherings will likely cripple hospitals before Christmas. The nation already seeing ICU wards filled at an all-time high. Shut it down. In Illinois, some nursing home workers reaching a breaking point, striking to protest the lack of PPE and demanding higher pay. We've had all workers die uh, from COVID. We had housekeeping, laundry, dietary workers. Yeah. COVID-19 numbers have doubled in some cities, have tripled in some cities, and have quadrupled even in some cities. Now, why should people overcrowd themselves in that nightclub? Ooh, that's the reason why they need to have a universal mandate of wearing masks, of the number, of the number limit of gatherings. So that you don't, you don't have this state doing their own thing and this state doing their own thing. Because then, if one state is doing better, the other state is not taking the same precaution. Then that state is doing bad and people are still traveling back and forth. You still have the virus moving around. So you still, you, 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 are, you are doing nothing. It's like that's the effort this, that this state is doing. is just going in vain. That's why if you have a universal law, a universal mandate of wearing masks and a limit to the number of people that can be in a nightclub and stuff, you have it controlled. I don't understand why nurses, first responders to this virus can be protesting for more pay. I mean, it has to be given to them. Because if you, you, you imagine the, the, amount, the amount of risk these people are taking every day, and the conditions which they are working in, can you, you know, they will cover their bodies all over. You know, they, they work in those shifts in, in an uncomfortable condition, in uncomfortable conditions. You know, somebody's, if somebody's working eight hours and now you have all these hospitals congested, that means these, these uh, nurses are probably forced to work longer shifts. I'm just thinking. Maybe they are. And if they are, they're working those long shifts or maybe more days than usual in those uncomfortable conditions. So they surely, surely deserve the better pay, more than the usual pay, because the conditions in which they're working in right now, they're not comfortable. They are just sacrificing a lot. People are dying. They are working not just with the risk of dying, you know, apart from the uncomfort uncomfortability of the working conditions, there's also a risk, a risk of contacting the virus and dying. You have, you have nurses with masks, marks on their, on their faces. They are wearing all these, all these uh, insulators, all these goggles, all these masks for those, sh those long shifts. So those conditions need recompense. Not the, those uh, nurses surely need to be paid better. Let's listen to the immunologist Dr. Fauci, the man to trust on this pandemic. And Dr. Fauci, New York City public schools shut down again earlier this month. I know your default position is that you'd like to see the schools open, but how do you make that happen? And how would you advise the incoming Biden administration on getting a sort of unified yeah. response? Well, you know, Martha, that's a good question. We get asked it all the time. You know, we say it not being facetiously as a soundbite or anything, but, you know, close the bars and keep the schools open is what we really say. Obviously, you don't have one size fits all, but as I said in the past and as you accurately quoted me, the default position should be to try as best as possible within reason to keep the children in school or to get them back to school. The best way to ensure the safety of the children in school is to get the community level of spread low. So if you mitigate the things that you know are causing spread in a very, very profound way, in a robust way, if you bring that down 
you will then indirectly and ultimately protect the children in the school because the community level is determined how things go across the board. So my feeling would be the same thing. If you look at the data, the spread among children and from children is not really very big at all, not like one would have suspected. So let's try to get the kids back, but let's try to mitigate the things that maintain and, and just push the kind of community spread that we're trying to avoid. And those are the things that you know well, the bars, the, the restaurants where you have capacity seating indoors without masks. Those are the things that drive the community spread, not the schools. So Dr. Fauci is saying, it's not in schools where, where COVID-19 is going to spread massively. It's in the communities, it's all these activities that adults do that are the cause of the massive spread of COVID-19. He said he closed the bars and opened the schools. He said these children are not very susceptible to COVID-19. You know, which makes, which makes sense then. Because, you know, I honestly feel like kids are not learning well online, you know. I know a lot of people would say the same thing. You know, high school, starting from high school going up, high school and college, those can do with online classes. But thinking about middle school and the, and the lower section and lower levels, what are they learning online? What are they learning? You know, so it's a waste of time. It's a, uh, kids are not learning enough. Kids are not acquiring as much knowledge as they were supposed to because of the COVID-19. Right? So if these kids are going back, uh, go back to school, it would be awesome. But, of course, Adults have to stop this massive spread of COVID-19. If we start taking all these precautions, because a lot of people now have started disregarding. A lot of us are disregarding these COVID-19 precautions now because there's skepticism on the authenticity of the virus itself, on the authenticity of the numbers of cases, because people is somebody saying 260,000 people dead. Where are they? Somebody, people are asking themselves, you are saying more than 90,000 people hospitalized. Where are they? That's the question people are asking themselves. So all these uh, skepticism, are, you know, are making people not take all these precautions or not follow all these precautions that are being um, laid out by specialists in these disciplines. So that's why you have all this spread of COVID-19. So Dr. Fauci is saying, if people, adults could be more cautious that we are not getting as much spread of COVID-19 as it is now, children will be able to go back to school because in schools, children won't spread the COVID-19 as much as others are because children are not that susceptible to this virus. Now, another issue is when the vaccine comes, whether it's going to be mandatory or voluntary to take it, and, and Dr. Fauci, you talked about the vaccine and the availability of the vaccine. The government can't force everyone to take the vaccine. So what about schools, companies, employers? Can they mandate a vaccine like in other vaccines? You know, any individual group can mandate vaccines in certain ways, Martha. It's not, I believe, going to come centrally. I don't want to get ahead of the game there, but I doubt that that would happen. For example... Right now, myself, I mean, I'm at the NIH Clinical Center. I'm a physician. I see patients. I have to get the influenza vaccine or I'm not going to be able to see patients. So individual units, be they hospitals or other organizations, can do that. It's within their right to say, if you want to work with us, you're going to have to get a vaccine. But that's not going to be, I believe, a centrally mandated process. See, with what Dr. Fauci just said, I mean, if, if your company starts make it mandatory, people will, will take it. Oh yeah, people will take it. If, whether you're skeptic or not, people will take it. Because if, when the vaccine comes, maybe the government won't be giving as much assistance as they are now. Maybe the government won't give as much assistance as it is being given now. So then people will be forced to take it. If you work and then they tell you you have to take the vaccine for you to continue working, and you know that if you quit your job, you're not getting no assistance from the government, then you surely take the vaccine. Right? You surely take the vaccine. 
if all the organizations, every workplace, if any group, any gathering, schools and other organizations say you cannot be here if you don't have a vaccine. People that care will take the vaccine. I mean, there's a lot of people that are surely very skeptical about the virus and even more about the vaccine. So you bring the vaccine here and it's not mandatory. There's a huge number of people that won't take it. So if they make it mandatory, maybe not nationally, but if every company, every organization make it mandatory, people will take the vaccine. And just that might just be the biggest and greatest step on eradicating the virus so that we can live in peace, maybe in mask free. I don't know if that will be soon or when. So ladies and gents, we had to talk about COVID-19 because we, have, we shouldn't forget that COVID-19 is still present. So ladies and gents, may God be with us, may God protect us, and we are still together.